um, soak that in a little bit. Uh, my dad, he, they, they faced many, many unjust situations, I'm sure, uh, you know, with my mom being 15, 16, right, pregnant and um, having to go through all of that. Um, my dad had a loving mother. Uh, my grandfather, his great grandfather, he committed suicide. His brother passed away during a military training up in Pohakuloa. He had another brother who was ill. He died at a very young age, to say the least, but that was a lot that I said. Um, but again, you know, it's thinking about all of these things that we're not in control of, that we can allow it to either hurt us or heal us. And I never, not one time ever, uh, recall my parents fighting in front of myself and my siblings ever. Um, I remember this one time, it was so funny because my dad was angry, but he was angry because he couldn't find his bag of opihis. And so he yelled. That was the first time in my life I ever heard my dad yell like that. Um, but the point is that my mom and dad showed so much love growing up in their words and in their actions and helping other people. And they still do that today. And so I think that that's where my love and, and enjoyment comes in terms of helping other people. And you know, just to talk a little, Astenia, am I, I'm, am I okay? Sorry, I don't know. I, I just don't want to interrupt your story. I'm really enjoying talking to you. Can you, is there everything okay? Yeah, no, you, you interrupt me if you need to. Well, I just really want you to tell your story because I don't want to take over. And, okay. And this is really good information. I love everything that you're saying. I don't know how I could like you anymore. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So if you're losing momentum, just say, Estania, help me out here and start talking to me and ask me questions. Oh, I, I, no, I'm writing, I've been taking notes on you because oh, of okay. the beautiful things that you are uh, expressing and sharing with people. I, you know, like we said, this is a, a test run. This is the, this is the launch and we see what's better for me to interject or, or just let the person speak. Um, I think you're a great speaker, so I just didn't feel like you needed me at all. So I'm going to mute myself until you need me. Okay. All right. So we're going to go back to love again. And, you know, I, I think that it's, it's very um, relevant to what's happening right now in the world with this whole Black Lives Matter, All Lives Matter. It kills me inside um, to see what's going on and to know that, you know, th this is something that's been going on for years, years, generations and generations. And I never knew color. You know, that's one of, again, going back to my mom and dad, it was all, always about love. In fact, um, my, my parents, um, their best friend is black. My mom's friend for years, she lives here. Um, in fact, she lives with my mom and dad um, in a home. She rents in another home, but she's black. My best friend is black. Um, I met her in Oakland, California, and I'll never forget you know, this, this one, when I went to visit her <laughs> this one time, her dad is a, was a pastor. He passed, um, God bless him. Um, and she, we went to this, the, their family church where the dad was a, a pastor at. And I remember her like equipping me, telling me, you know, don't worry. Um, it's going to be okay. It's all good. And now that I think about that, I, I get it. But at that time, I was like, why are you telling me this? Like, what's going to happen? Um, but, you know, we went to what she called the ghetto. And um, the church was like, you would never guess or know that this place was a church. But once you swung th those doors open and you, you heard them singing, they one thing about the Pentecostal church that I went to, um, they didn't hold back. And it was myself and my friend, the only two white people there. Everyone just showed love. It was love. You wouldn't even know color, nothing. Um, so, you know, it, it breaks my heart to see what's happening around the world. Um, but love is, you know, love wins every time. And I'm glad that, I'm not glad that we're going through what we're going through right now, but I'm glad that we're raising awareness um, going through what we are going through right now, right? Because that's what it is. That's what we need, a heightened awareness to what's happening around us. And it starts in our homes. And this is what I'm so grateful um, for with my mom and my dad, despite their struggles. And now that I know and I have my own blended family, I get it and I understand 
Hawaii, we went through a lot of the things that, um, that we went through. Uh, but again, it always came back and comes back to love. So thank you, mom and dad, for, for showing me that. I'm very, very grateful. Um, so again, educate your family, educate your children. Um, let them know that it's just love, you know, and I'm going to go back to it again. It, easier said than done. However, if that's something that we hear repetition over and over again, consistency, it's all about love, loving and serving other people, they'll get it and it'll be like nothing for them. Mental health, again, talking about self-awareness, you know, that was something I was never really conscious of growing up. Um, I, you know, I grew up again in a family of, I, my mom had children from a previous relationship. My dad had children from a previous relationship. My brother and I were the only children that were in the house consistently. And so we always had um, my, my older siblings coming in, coming in and out of the home, right? Because they had um, their, their mom and their moms and dads, um, their other mom and dad. Yeah. My, my siblings, I never say half or step They're They're my siblings. Um, but you know, as I think about this now, having my own blended family, again, I appreciate and I'm so grateful um, for what my mom and dad created and tried to create um, and tried to keep in our home. Um, so again, my mom and dad, they worked really, really hard. They, like a lot of families, sometimes your children are home with grandma and grandpa. Sometimes your children are left with auntie and uncle, cousins, whoever, so that they can go to work. A lot of our families around the world and in our communities deal with that today. And so there were, there were a lot of things that my parents weren't aware of that happened um, to me. And I share this with a, with a humble and um, an awareness for other women to know that and understand that it's okay. I had a really, really hard time sharing, um, you know, my story of, of being sexually um, taken advantage of. I, I don't, you know, I, I don't like to use that, the, the molest and, and um, assault words, because um, I, I, I don't know the difference. I just know that I was being taken advantage of in a way that was unjust. And so I share that again for our women um, who struggle in this area of their lives because the moment that I was able to share this story, that was really the moment where I felt like I sadly started truly living the authentic life that God created me to live and, and to become. And although I feel like I've kind of been living that life at least, at least for the past seven years of being now with my amazing, amazing, hardworking, supportive husband. Um, it was that moment where I felt freedom and I felt like, you know, going back to what others think about you is none of your business. And then experiencing the loss of, of really important, well, to me, people in my life that made a difference in my life and then having children, right, that experience trauma as far as having um, their, grand, their grandmother um, and grandfathers and, and tutus pass away. And then as a parent, having to explain to them things that they'll never understand. Even till today, there's things I don't understand, but I don't dwell on it. I just take the positives. And I think this is where Valence comes in, right? You just take the, va the, the positive thinking about Valence and, and try to make the best out of um, your situation using all these positive and, and even the negatives because, you know, it reminds you of what you don't want to become. It reminds you of where you don't want to, to be. Um, so were you conscious, like when you brought up the situ uh, situation about being uh, taken advantage of in a sexual manner. Were you conscious of you taking the positive? Or when you allowed your story to be told and you started sharing it, did you see, feel strength in that? And that's why you, did you pull from that to become who you are? I absolutely pulled from that the moment that I left that, that night. So it was a women's conference that I was asked to, to share at. 
to be the guest speaker. And I thought, you know, what, what am I, same with this, right? What am I, what am I going to share um, with women who, uh, who are a lot older than me, for one, and um, we're women. We all go through the same thing, but not in that, when it comes to the taking advantage of, like that part, I think a lot of people feel um, embarrassed. Mm-hmm. You know, they're, they're embarrassed to share things that, um, like that, that happened to them um, because they don't want people to look at them differently. It's, an, it's you know? embracing the shame. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, but yes, it's embracing, embracing the shame that shouldn't exist. Do you see? It's like they think it's a shameful thing on their part, I think. And that's why people have a hard time opening up about it. But if they realize yeah. it's not something to be ashamed of because you weren't the one who took advantage, I think is a really important point. Just my opinion. Yeah, no, that, that's, that's right. That's, that's a part of it. Absolutely. That's a part of it. Um, so you know, accepting yourself the way that you are and everything that you've been through, uh, where you have been, and again, aligning yourself with where you want to be because we're constantly becoming and everything that we do, every person that we talk to, every, um, every action, right? For every action, there's a reaction, but in that we can always learn something. And again, what has helped me is my prayer, my scriptures, listening, watching, um, motivational, inspirational books and, and, videos but mostly applying it and again not the most easy thing to do but when we find ourselves doing what is the most difficult thing to do in that we find freedom and we find strength and what we thought was our weaknesses it's it suddenly becomes our strength um so i feel again grateful you know when i help people that's that's what really helps me um, in, in getting through, um, well, I'm, I'm kind of, I mean, I'm past that. Like you never, I hear people say, you know, forgive and forget. You never forget. Um, but I think in the forgiveness is where, you know, you, you heal because the forgiveness it really is for you. It, it's not for other people. I mean, somebody can hurt you, you know, I, I don't know how many t- times or, or how many years ago. Um, and they, they probably don't even know. You probably don't even think about it, but you do. And so it only hurts you. So it heals you when you forgive and it's for you. Um, you know, I, I started my own place of learning and growing with Dream Hawaii Studio. That is actually why I started Dream Hawaii Studio so that I could empower, I could continue to encourage young women specifically, although Dream Hawaii Studio is for everyone, um, but particularly young women. So you were asking earlier, what is it that I teach there? Voice and performance mentorship, hula, I do pageant training, but really it's to remind our youth while they're performing and um, doing these things that that they want to learn, that they are valuable, that they matter. That's why I do what I do at Dream Hawaii Studio. And I think about what I would have needed or wanted when I was a young girl. What would have helped me make better choices? Yeah, what would have helped me to, um, because I think that our children, now that I'm a parent, right, our children, they they take in things that we tell them um, for whatever reason. Somebody else can come along and tell them the exact same thing we were trying to tell them for the past two months, and they get it. So I want to be that person to our youth, to our communities, to our children. I think it's so very important for them to have that that person that they trust and that'll make a difference in their lives. Um, I decided to go back to college. I graduated, like you were sharing earlier, with my um, certificate in human services. Again, heal people, heal people. Um, Hurt people, hurt people. Heal people, help hurt people, heal. And um, I'm going to receive my Associate of Arts in Liberal Arts next semester. You know, I decided to run for uh, student government at Hawaii Community College. I became president there just so that I could, again, advocate for our students, advocate for um, 
things that the students wanted more of. Um, simple things like give me more food. Um, we don't feel like our voices are heard here. You know, we need this, we need that. And I decided to be that person for our students at the community college and I still help um, them. I'm still helping them today, you know, with things that are happening there at the college. And I was recently inducted into the National um, Success and Leadership Society, which I'm extremely grateful for. It has taught me a lot. Um, I'm currently working towards my executive leadership certification. Um, and this has helped me, again, tremendously, not just, okay. So I'm going to stop here because I feel like it's so important to take care of yourself mentally. Mental health awareness is absolutely essential for every single person. And no matter what it is that we go through in life, mentally, if we can be strong enough to pull ourselves out of whatever situation happened, right? Whatever adversity, whatever challenges you have, you got to have that, that mental strength that will help you constantly choose the positive because it's so easy to just be negative. It's so much easier to just be negative. Like sometimes I wake up in the morning and I, I, I ask myself, can I just be negative today? Like, just, <laughs> you know, like, I don't want to listen to anybody. I don't want to go to work. I just want to stay right here and just be negative. Please leave me alone because it's so much easier. But that's why they say that, um, you know, what is that 90, 10 rule? The, I, for which one? For what? 90, 10, life is 10% what happens to you, 90% what you do with what happens to you. And that's so true. And it's so important. So, you know, taking care of yourself is the most important thing. Well, it's um, interesting that you say it's the mental, because you do, you have to, your brain has to make that decision. You mean, you're, because your heart could be saying something you're emotionally feeling some way but if your brain doesn't say no you go do this you may not do it so I can and your heart can be deceiving your heart can be deceiving so you want to you want to stay mentally healthy yeah. you know um so yeah you're 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 right <clears throat> um and again you know for me for me and it's it could be different for everybody because everybody finds their their happiness in different ways um, you know, for me, it's my spirituality, it's praying, it's meditating, it's talking to God. Um, again, I'm going to go back to reading and, and watching videos, but most importantly, applying it, you know, even when I don't, especially when I don't feel like it. Um, and then, and then doing things like this. So stepping out of your comfort zone, right? I've missed out on so many opportunities because of, um, when I was in my, my last marriage with um, my children, my boys, <clears throat> their, their father, it was a very unhealthy, <clears throat> excuse me. Okay. It was, a very, it was a very unhealthy environment. And so with that unhealthy environment, it's, it's just, I can't think of any other word, but toxic, you know? And so coming out of that and trying to coming off of, you know, I, I think about, and I, it shouldn't be this way, but I thought about, you know, all the awards and all the accolades, right? And then you get into this relationship and you just lose yourself. Like, how does that happen? Right? And then trying to get out of the relationship now and trying to get healthy again. I mean, talk about feeling like, you know, you're in this pit and just scraping the walls, trying to climb out of this pit. Like to the point where I, I had to teach myself to smile again. Mm. And um, that's how bad it was that I, I allowed myself. And I'm so, I, I get so upset at myself for when I think about how I, I allowed myself to go there, you know, and, um, but it makes sense to me. Now that I know what I know, it makes sense to me. Um, so I think that trying to having that accountability partner and also no matter what, no matter who, no matter when, no matter where, you always have to stay conscious of your self, right? Why do you feel this way? Who's around me right now? What's happening? 
Why do I not like what I'm feeling? And identifying that, those moments so that you can, and sometimes, it, well, I don't know if most of the time it's you. Well, yeah, maybe it is. You know, it's you that you're, you're uncomfortable for a certain reason. And this is what brings me to going back to the opportunity part. I've missed out on so many opportunities I feel in my life because I wasn't aware or able to identify why, why the, tr the triggers that was happening. Um, and, and, and then connecting that to, to the trauma. Yeah. You have trauma, then you have triggers that, that, um, bring you back to this place of um, uncertainty, of um, self-doubt, of self-sabotage. I used to do it to myself all the time. Um, just things like this. You know, if this was 10 years ago, I would have said, no way, no way. You know, and um, really being ha happy and satisfied um, with other people you know, being able to cheer them on and being able to um, just like embrace the good things that people are doing, you know, in the world. It, it helps you as well. So anyways, I, I really think that, you know, you hit on a very important point that I, when I decided to do this show, it was one of the first, one of the things that I wanted to leave the show the thought of okay so yeah we do all these things for ourselves to grow and I love the fact you said all knowledge is taught in is, is not taught in the same school that just completely resonates with me and I think all the things that you talked about today really helped you to become who you are and also you know you had to build upon those stories and you had to see yourself a certain way to be able to change to make those changes to make those shifts um, but what I noticed, you know, like I said, I went into onto that one uh, networking group that were of women and they were all talking about how sad they were and they were so focused on their sadness. So, uh, and the one thing I just wanted them to do is try and reframe their thinking, try and look at it in a positive way, but also to get out, not make it about you and actually, like you said, be happy around others. So if you can, if you can find it in yourself to do for others, to reach out and help others, that sort of gets you out of your own self. And, yeah. well, and it sounds like that's a lot of what you are doing in life. Uh, yeah. Yeah. A absolutely. And, um, you know, again, it's one of those things where I think it's just human nature, right? When you see other people succeeding, it's like, you just have that feeling. I can't explain that feeling. You just have that feeling. Everybody has that feeling of, oh, because I think that, you know, we, it, we all want to be heard. We all want our ideas to matter and we all want to become something. We don't know what that something is, um, but we all want to feel valued. That's what it is. Um, so, yeah, I think when you step out of yourself and you help other people, um, in that it makes you feel valued because you help somebody. It doesn't matter what it is that you did. It's the fact that you stepped out and you actually helped someone. And that, that feeling is what we as human beings live for. I think we thrive off of that value. So um, you know, with every adversity, a wise man once told me, with every adversity, there's an equal or greater opportunity. And to the women that who are becoming, make your mistakes, you know, learn from them, seek out opportunities, especially during challenging moments. And men too, men too. Men, men too realize that too, yeah. That's right. Sorry. I'm like talking to my private women group. <laughs> no, this is for everyone, everyone, because we all have our stories. That's the thing. We all have such unique stories. And sometimes I just, I was just talking to my auntie about this the other night. I said, you know, when you sit and you have conversations with people and then you start getting like really comfortable and, and they get comfortable and they start sharing things with you and, and you like, you've known them for years, but you never knew that one thing about them. And then you, uh, for me anyways, I start thinking like, wow, it's no wonder you're such a strong um, you know, confident woman, or at least you, you show that all the time, right? Because of those things that you just shared with me, the adversities, but you choose to align yourself with 
the positivities and things that's going to lift you up. So, and then the last, so the last point that I had was welcome the W's, welcome the W's, the who, who do I need? Why do I need that? Or why do I need them? And where? Identify your resources, your accountability partners, so that you know where to go. When you're feeling down and, and challenged, you know where to go. Um, and then when? Create the goals. Create those goals, babes. It's so very important to have even short-term goals, right? Little things that I want to do um, by the end of next week. Because again, we go back to value, you want to feel accomplished, and that's what helps us again. And then notice what makes you feel alive, identifying those people who, who are around you, what kind of envir environment makes you feel good, you know? Makes and those you that help you to feel like you're learning something, that you're growing, mm -hmm. huh? Yes, yes. Well, Palmai, I really appreciate all of the stories. I think we could dive into each one even deeper. Yeah. Um, I wish we had more time, but I really wanted to see if there was anyone that wanted, had any questions for you. Uh, but otherwise, I think we would, I'd love to have you on again because there are, I took a bunch of notes because I'm thinking, oh, we got to talk about that someday. <laughs> and I really would love to see your progression because you know what? I think it's really important for not just women, but all all people to support each other in our successes, uh, mm -hmm. I think is really important. And to see you strive for so much really is pleasing. It's really nice to hear. And I, I appreciate wish, that. Thank you. Yeah, I wish you the best. And I, those are the type of people I like to surround myself by. So did I mention that I, I don't know how I could like you more, but I really do like you. <laughs> what? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so what, is there any last little thing that you'd like to share one last little quote or one last little thought if you had to just you know say one thing to the audience what would it be what would you like to end with proverbs nineteen twenty one: many are the plans in a person's heart but it's the lord's purpose that prevails so even if we plan everything we all probably can share one or more times where the plan never went exactly how we planned it and that's because God has the ultimate plan no matter what. So just stay positive, stay motivated, stay healthy, and continue to love. And be balanced. Fitness. Right. <laughs> Fitness in your balance, yes? Yeah? Oh. Pomai, thank you so much. I really appreciate you, and I appreciate the guests that have been here today. Uh, look forward to more guests coming on in, every week on Saturday at 3 p.m. Hawaii time. Uh, next week, I do believe we have someone coming also from Hilo, Hawaii. The following week, someone out of, uh, I believe, LA, and then from Texas. So we have people that are going to be tuning in from across the nation. And like I said, we all have room to grow and learn from each other. So thank you for tuning in to Balanced Fitness, a place where you will have, you will hear stories of adversity, but told with positivity. Thank you. Thanks, Take care. You too. Bye-bye.